Hello Booktube, let's try this again. Um, today I'm going to be doing the Around the World in 80 Books tag. Uh, this tag was created by Fit to be Read, and I'll leave a link to his original channel down below. Um, so let's get started with the prompts, because I'm doing this before I start work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Prompt number one. Your favorite book set in or with reference to Eastern Europe or Asia? I'm going to recommend three books for this prompt. Um, one about Eastern Europe, one about Asia, and one about both. So for Eastern Europe, I'm going to go with Iron Curtain, The Crushing of Eastern Europe by Anne Applebaum. This is a history about the uh, communist takeovers in various Eastern European countries um, after World War II uh, during the Soviet occupations of those countries. Um, it is a wonderful, heartbreaking, amazing book. Um, for Asia, I'm going to go with a Tombstone by Yang Jixing. This is a history of the Great Chinese Famine that lasted from about 1958 to 1962 or 63, and it is just an amazing documentary history that um, explores the just heartrending events during those years. It's amazing. I also highly recommend uh, Jixing's uh, more recent uh, work, um, The World Turned Upside Down, which is a history of the Cultural Revolution using a lot of the same techniques that he used in Tombstone. And for both, I'm going to go with um, Post Wall, Post Square by Christina Spohr, which is a history of the end of communism from, or of communist domination, I guess, from 1988 to 1993 or 94. And it features um, Tiananmen Square, the fall of the Berlin Wall, um, the collapse of the various Eastern European communist regimes in Poland, uh, East Germany, Hungary, uh, Czechoslovakia, as well as the unification of Germany, the, um, I think the separation of Czechoslovakia into the Czech Republic and Slovakia, and the collapse of the Soviet Union and the breaking up of the Soviet Union into its constituent um, former Soviet republics. Um, it is an amazing book that I would argue was the best book I read last year or second, depending. But it was, it is really good. I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, prompt number two, a booktuber or booktubers uh, from a country other than your own that you regularly watch. Um, Britta Bowler, um, who lives in Cologne, um, and Sean the Book Maniac, who is a Canadian living in uh, Tokyo, Japan. Uh, both of them are amazing booktubers. Uh, prompt number three. A book you DNF'd before 80 pages. Um, most of the books I DNF, I DNF before 80 pages because I can fairly quickly see that I'm not going to get on with this book or something in those first 80 pages is going to upset me intensely to where I quit on the book. And for this prompt, I'm going to go with a Docile by K.M. Sapara. Um, Docile is a near-ish future um, a dystopic novel in which uh, that slavery has become a thing, and there's this drug called Dossaline, which docile, um, was invented to make these debt slaves more tractable um, to performing actions that they ordinarily would find repugnant to do. It also um, sort of makes uh, memory connections between during this period difficult. So uh, most people who've been on Dossaline do not remember what they did exactly during their period of slavery. 
Um, there are side effects. Um, the protagonist's mother was a debt slave herself and she had a very bad experience on the drug. It's pretty much wrecked her mind. Now, why exactly the family is now incredibly wealthy because of this, I don't know, but whatever. I mean, it's fiction. Um, so the main protagonist who has to, in order to save the family, has to sell himself, um, refuses to be on Dosseline because of this. And he, his contract is bought by a hot young man who's the heir to the family who created Dosseline. And so they pretty much enter into a slave fic romance. And if you don't know a slave fic romance is a romantic plot in which um, usually the protagonist is somehow enslaved and they are bought by their eventual love interest who is their master and it's it's very skeevy and I do not like slave fix at all so yeah so I read the book or I read the first 80 pages and or well it's more like 40 I think I lasted a few chapters and just the writing, the characters, the world building, just everything pissed me off. So I bailed. Um, and of course, one, I'm like wondering why exactly did I buy this in the first place? And because obviously if you've read this, my channel, oh, not read my channel, I'm sorry, uh, seen, watch my channel, you'll know I'm not particularly fond of dystopic fiction. Um, and I find slave fic romances to be incredibly distasteful. So why did I buy this book? Why was I why was I interested in reading it? It I wanted. Uh, I mean, I want to read science fiction and fantasy written by um, LGBTQ plus authors, and I would like to read science fiction and fantasy with LGBTQ plus characters. And fortunately, what I've read has been rather disappointing, but that's a rant for another day. Anyway, let's move on to the next prompt because I don't have much time to actually film this video. Um, I'm doing this early because I want to finish uh, the book I'm reading right now, which is Building an American Empire by Paul Freimer, which is incredibly good. Uh, so prompt number four. A book you settled for and picked up at an airport or anywhere and ended up pleasantly surprised with. So, the only time I can remember this happening was when I was uh, leaving San Francisco to come back to Waco. Um, and I ended up having to leave where I was living at at the time um, early because the, my flight left relative I think quite early and the public transportation system doesn't run late at night or at the time I don't think it did and also whether or not I've been able to wake up on time because that's happened before um, so I basically spent the night at um, the airport in San Francisco and so I took three books with me. Um, I'd sent uh, most of the books I'd collected in San Francisco uh, back home via UPS or to Waco by UPS. So they took about another week or so to get to me. Nervous, nerve wracking week, week or so. But anyway, so I took um, Neuromancer by William Gibson. Uh, Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Foer and Accession by Ian M. Banks. I was finishing up, I think I either read um, Neuromancer pretty much within a few hours and really loved it while I was at the airport. I might have started it before then, but I think it was also at the airport. And then I started Everything is Illuminated and didn't really get on with it. So then I started Accession, and I absolutely loved it. It, It's a wonderful book. I pretty much read it um, throughout my flight and um, ended up 
finishing it, I think the day after I got back, or uh, my flight ended, and it was an amazing book. Um, unfortunately, I haven't really gotten on with much else of I Am Banks' work, but yeah. Uh, prompt number five. In Jules, Jules Verne's classic, Around the World in 80 Days, Phileas Fogg is a perfectionist, more concerned with his perfection than the amazing places he travels. That doesn't resonate. If that doesn't resonate, describe in which ways you are a perfectionist when it comes to any of your bookish habits. I'm not entirely sure I quite understand this prompt, um, but I don't. I don't think I really have much in the way of like perfectionist um, like tendencies towards my books, except for maybe wanting to get more, but that's not necessarily perfectionist, that's more hoarding, so I don't quite know. Um, so I'm going to go on and move to prompt number six. Your favorite book set in or references or links to Africa? For this, I'm going to go with Dictator Land by Paul Kenyon. It's a book that looks at um, various dictators in Africa and how they came to power and how they ultimately wrecked their countries. Um, it's an amazing book. I really enjoyed reading it. Um, prompt number seven. Judging by only the first 80 pages, the best book you have read, and then by the last 80 pages, the best book you've read. Again, I, I'm not entirely sure about this, but thinking about this prompt, I did kind of find an interesting two books to talk about, and that would be Kings of the Wild by uh, Nicholas Eames and Bloody Rose by Nicholas Eames. Um, I loved the first 80 pages of um, Kings of the Wild. It's a epic fantasy novel that pretty much throws everything into it. And it is amazing. And its conceit is that in this world, there are mercenary bands who are hired to fight monsters and explore and do dungeons and that sort of thing. And these mercenary bands are very much treated like rock stars in our world and a lot of the sort of attitudes towards these bands and stuff mirrors the various musical movements in our world and it is a hoot. I really enjoyed Kings of the Wild and the first 80 pages are quite good. I really enjoyed it. That's not necessarily true with Lady Rose who's last 80 pages are amazing but the first part of the book i really didn't get on with at all and i think part of that is that i don't think the protagonist or the narrator um eames chose for this book really quite works in a way i mean i'm kind of a bit suspicious as to why he chose this particular narrator um, protagonist but anyway but I also think part of the problem is that um, her character is really sort of kind of in, like an introduction to this world which would have worked better with a first book not with a second book I mean in a second a sequel one assumes you've read the first book and so you don't really need your handheld to be introduced into this world. You've already been introduced to it. So I think that might be part of my problem with it. Um, another part I think is that it's a little too repetitive as well. Uh, because at this point, um, Bloody Rose's band are going on a tour. And that tour is rather repetitive until they finally get to the point of it all. Um, but still the, after that part, the Bloody Rose is fantastic. It's just the first 80 to 150 pages of Horace Log. Um, prompt number eight. 
a book you love that prominently features an ethnic or local cuisine some way prominently featured or even if just a standout cameo I'm going to go with um well actually you could go with Naruto because I mean Naruto loves his ramen and particularly earlier in the series uh, he goes to um Ichiraku ramen uh ramen stand quite frequently so I would go with that um I was also tempted to be a bit bratty and go with um uh Japanese Cooking a Simple Art by, uh, I'm blanking on his name right now, um, which is a Japanese cookbook I have. Um, I could also probably go with um, The Glorious Foods of Greece by Diana uh, Koklas, um, which I really love. So, yeah, I think I'll go with that. <laughs> um, I haven't actually cooked anything from uh, Japanese cooking a simple art. Um, I really should. Um, but I've cooked a few things from the Glorious Foods of Greece and quite enjoyed it. Uh, where am I at? Okay, prop number nine. The last travel or other fiction book you looked at or read featuring a city other than your own. Um... Well, generally, that's every book. I mean, because nothing really references McGregor or Rako. Except for Big Wonderful Thing by Steve Harrigan. There's a bit of a reference to Rako there, but anyway. Um, but I haven't really, I don't really read travel fiction, so, or no, non-fiction, so, anyway. Um, prompt number 10. Any book you have read set in or references either Central or South America? Um, I'm kind of tempted to go with the history here, but I haven't, I mean, I don't really know if I could recommend Republics of the New World. Um, so I think I'm going to go with um, Autobiography of Red by Ann Carson. It's a poetic uh, novel that initially takes place in Canada, but ends in South America, in Argentina and Peru. It's a take on, or modernization of um, the Jorion section of the uh, Travel Labors of Heracles. Um, in this case, uh, Jorion is a young man who is rather monstrous. He's red, he has wings. He's not triple bodied, but, and he uh, falls in love with a young man named Heracles, and then eventually into a, sort of a love triangle between himself, Heracles, and a young man named Ankosh. Um, so it's really good. I loved it. Um, I don't have it anymore. I haven't had it for a while, but I've been meaning to pick up uh, Autobiography Red for it ages so maybe i really should do that um okay prompt number 11 um your favorite book referencing another world universe or dimension maybe this is uh, i'm not gonna read the parentheses part <clears throat> um so my favorite book referencing another world so this would be science fiction, and I think for this, I'm going to go with Dune by Frank Herbert. Um, it takes place on the planet Arrakis, and it's within our universe-ish. Um, I mean, it's humanity tens of thousands of years in the future, and it's about feuding noble families and all of that stuff. Um, although... Every time I read Dune, I like it a little bit less, so maybe not the best option here. Um, universe, I'm going to go with... Hmm, Naruto. I guess I'll go just go with Naruto. Um, and then with uh, Dimension, I'll go with Fairy Tale by Hiro Mishima. It's um, a wonderful manga, one of my favorite mangas. Um, 
And so finally, prompt number 12. In Rita Goldman Gelman's Tales of a Female Nomad, Rita left an elegant life in LA to follow her dream of connecting with people and cultures all over the world. Your dream read to read in any dream location, real or fictional, of your choosing. Oh, I have no idea. Um, I don't know specifically the book. I don't know. Uh, but a dream location, I would love to read in, like, uh, a really nice house with a screened in porch during fall or earth spring something like that i think would be really nice um also maybe in venice or <clears throat> like gosh sydney or berlin or something like that and fictionally uh probably magnolia from fairy tale or um new Krobuzon in boss uh from the chinese china medievals boss log novels although not coming to the attention of uh, the militia. No. <laughs> anyway, so there are a number of uh, tag challenges that kind of precede this, but I'm going to not do those because um, I'm kind of running out of time. So if you would like to do this tag, consider yourselves tagged, and I will see you uh, maybe tomorrow. I don't know exactly what time. Uh, depends how things turn out um, with maybe another tag video or something else. I don't know. But anyway, BookTube, thank you. Have a great morning and afternoon and stay safe.